In this final tutorial, we'll build our game so that it can work natively on mobile phones, i.e. export it from the editor as an app for Android and iOS so that it's ready for publishing. Let's begin. This should be a short tutorial. From File in the menu bar, go to Build Settings. Make sure that both the menu and game scenes are included in the build, with the menu scene being the first scene. You can confirm this by reading the order of the build for each scene next to its name. Unity is gonna build the zeroth scene first, which is the menu scene, and then the first scene, which is the game scene. And here are all the different platforms that we can build our game to. To build your game to any of these platforms, you must first select it as a target platform. My current target platform is PC, Mac, and Linux standalone, indicated by the Unity logo next to it. And I'm assuming that this is also your default target platform. Now if we wanna build our game as an app for Android, let's say, then we must first switch our target platform to Android. So select Android under Platform and then hit Switch Platform from here to prepare the build process for the game on Android using the Android SDK. The Unity Editor will now take a minute and re-import our project files with the modified settings to work for Android devices. If you didn't download the Android SDK from when you first installed the Unity Editor using the Unity Hub, then it will ask you to install the SDK from the Unity Hub. If that's the case, then just do that and come back to this window in the editor. Then you'll have the option of switching to this target platform. Once the process of re-importing your project files is complete for the new target platform, you'll see a Unity logo indicating our new build target platform, which has now become Android. I'll leave these build settings as they are, there is no need to change anything here. Now let's go to the player settings window from here. This will take you straight to the player option in the player settings window. From this option, we can configure our build for the game app. The first thing will change is the name of our app from the product name field. Let's name our game app Temperan underscore clone. You can name it anything you'd like of course. And I'll also change the company name to com.udemy.temperan underscore clone. This way of naming is formally called reverse domain notation. This company name is just for verification purposes for when you upload or if you want to upload your game to the Play Store or the App Store. Moving on. And we'll consider this release to be a better version of our app. So let's make the app version 0.1. Now if you want, you could select an app icon from your game from this option. You just have to import your app icon as an asset in your Unity project and then convert it to a 2D sprite in the same way that we did for the distance core display UI image from the second UI tutorial. I'm gonna keep the default Unity icon as my app icon. Now go to the Android player settings by clicking on the Android system icon here and then expand the resolution and presentation option. I want my game to only be played in landscape left mode. So change this setting from auto rotation to landscape left. If you want your game to auto rotate with the player's phone orientation, be it portrait or landscape, then keep the settings as auto rotation. But I prefer landscape left. And yeah, I think that these are all the relevant settings for our type of game. We're now ready to build it for Android devices. So close the project settings window now, and then go back to the build settings window. Make sure that you've got Android selected from platform, and then hit build. Select a location on your computer for the exported Android app file, which has a .apk extension. I'm gonna save it in a new folder on my desktop called build. And let's give the installation file for our game app a name. Let's name it Temperan Clone underscore install. Hit save and then wait for it to export the game as an app. Now if you wanna build your game for iOS, then the process is very similar to what we did with Android. Go to build settings, switch the target platform to iOS, and keep these settings as they are. Then, go to the player settings from here to configure this build. It will take you to the same player settings that we saw earlier with the Android build. And our configuration for the same app name and company name as well as the version is still here. The only thing we need to change is the iOS settings for our build. So click on the iOS icon here. Let's expand the resolution and presentation settings. And then force a landscape left rotation in our game. If you want the user of your game to play it in any rotation he wishes, then just keep the default orientation option to auto rotation. Now close the project settings window and then go back to the player settings window. Make sure that you've got iOS selected from platform, then hit build and choose a location on your computer for the iOS build file for your game. I'll use the same folder that I used to export my Android build. Now wait for the export process to finish. 
Once it's done exporting, go to the folder to which you've exported your game app in the Unity Editor from your file explorer. You'll find that the export process has generated an APK install file for the Android platform and an Xcode project file for the iOS platform. These two files are what you need to publish your game app to the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store respectively. Unfortunately, I can't show you the steps of publishing our game on either store because it requires you to create a developer account and pay some initial fee. But I've included two articles that you can find under the resource tab of this tutorial that will take you through the steps of publishing your game in the Google Play Store and the App Store in clear and excruciating details. Also, while I wish that there was an easy way to test our game natively on either platform before approving them for publishing on either store, the simple truth is that there isn't an easy way, especially for iOS. For Android, you could perhaps email the .apk game installation file to yourself and then install it manually to see how it's gonna run exactly before you go ahead and publish it in the Play Store. And here is a quick demo for the game running natively on my Android phone. Here is our menu scene looking crisp and gorgeous. And if I click on start, then it takes me to my game. You can hear the different sound effects in our game and see the clearing font effect. You can also see that the swipe gestures are working beautifully. And I'm translating left and right in the game by tilting the phone left and right with no lag whatsoever. Our game is running very smoothly and the graphics are superb if I don't say so myself. Also, I'm able to collect coins and have the game track my running distance score. Let's respawn. And now if I die quickly and then hit exit, the game will take me out of the app. And if I reopen my game app, then I can see my best scores. If I hit the exit option, then the game shuts. Really, I'm loving the result. And yeah, by the way, our game app is just 36 megabytes, which is amazing for a game that implements this many features. Unfortunately, to test our game app natively on iOS, you need a relatively modern Mac machine with Xcode installed as a start, which you know isn't cheap. I believe that you also need a developer account that's linked with Xcode, which is gonna cost you as well. Either way, I might go ahead and create a tutorial or two attempting to show you how you can natively test your game app on either platform. Let me know if you want me to make such tutorials, because they're gonna need some work. Okay, that's it for this tutorial, and the series as a whole. Good luck to you in your game development career and endeavors. I'm sure that since you've made it this far into the series, that you must love game development and creating things in general for others. It was my pleasure delivering the materials for this tutorial series to you. I had a blast doing it. Game development is really fun, and teaching it is even more fun and exciting. If you have any questions, not just regarding this series, but in game development in general, then shoot them to me here in Udemy. I'll answer them for sure in as many details as I can. Bye.